Welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Stephen. Today's episode is about the early 1900s buffet clarinets, and we'll go up to around 1937 and then break it apart in another episode. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe, like, and share afterwards. Let's start learning about the buffet clarinets. So what we have here is we're going to review my clarinetperfection.com website. We're going to skip this part up here. We're going to get right to the clarinets themselves. We can pause and read about it if you wish. Okay, so in the late 1800s, we'll start there actually. This particular serial number is 577B. It has an integrated barrel with the upper joint. We'll take a look at some pictures. You'll notice a lack of adjuster screw over the throw key here. Flat sheet key, trill key guides here. Here's the integrated barrel. Another look here. See the shared throat keys here. See there's one post here supporting both the throat keys. So there's only three posts for it. That changed with the R13 back in 1955-ish. You'll notice on some of these keys here, these little dots, and that is a screw that goes down and holds a flat spring. You'll see it over here too in the C sharp, G sharp key, a little dot there from a screw <clears throat> for a flat spring. There's a bell. The entire instrument. There's more pictures. Nothing really different than the first one. Uh, this one is the 1895 half bone. I actually have a episode strictly about that. I'll put it in the end in a link. There's actually two half bones. Coming up here, we have the teapot register vent where it rolls around from the back up to the front. See right here. Problem is long keys that can easily get bent and deformed a bit and um leak actually not a very good design for durability once again there's no throat adjuster key right there i mentioned the flat springs here's an example of it flat spring with the adjusting screw coming up all it does they um, ground down the screw on the back side that's why you see little circles on the keys it actually springs And one thing about the professional buffets is they always had a cutout underneath the keys. The keys are designed to be really low on the body. You won't find this on the Yvette and Yvette Schaefer clarinets, even the K-series. The K-series are not actually rejected R13s or anything because the bodies weren't finished. Key work is different. Different key work altogether, even though it looks the same, of course. It's very easy to say, oh, all the clarinets look the same, but then the buffet looks like a sum or all the key work looks the same. Depends how generic you want to make your statements. Once again, here's one finished. These are very nice playing. You see a single post for the left hand keys here. In fact, I have one. It's in a refurbishment right now. See how this register key just bends right over.
here's the register key now. You can see how long it is. And this part's really long and like, like I mentioned, it can easily get bent. And it's really hard for it to seal properly. Back a long time ago before they actually had modern pads, they used just felt pads and um, or leather pads. The leather pads work better on this key than a double bladder pad does. Another picture. As you can see, all these clearances look the same throughout the ages. There really was not very many changes per se with a standard Bohm clarinet that is. This one here has the H. Bettany distributor name on the buffet clarinet. So H. Bettany, Carl Fisher, who knows who else may have distributed them. I mentioned up above here, this has a C-sharp, G-sharp tone hole that is not cut. It's actually curved. So you can't really put a standard pad on it. You can use a leather pad and it's easy to curve a leather, leather pad or you can use a cork pad <clears throat> where you actually cut it so it's shaped to the body. See the picture right here? See there's no cut like this other tone hole here, it's cut down, but C sharp, G sharp is just a hole in the body. And that's all it is. Here's a 1909 enhanced bohm. This high pitch, is that HP or LP? Looks like LP. You'll notice no adjuster in the throat key yet. This one has a uh, enhanced bohm. Look at the way the C sharp, G sharp, the trill key is up here. So this is always sprung, and this keeps it down. Interesting. Here's what it looks like from above. This one's actually a not a complete full bone, but it had low key on it. But not all the extra key work you get up here with the extra speaker key or the extra ring key. That's not there either. Look at that key work. Nineteen fifteen buffet advertisement. Bingo. Has on the left hand side about all the instruments. Carl Fisher, special representative. Nineteen twenty one era, we had a novel design called a donut key here. As you can see, a large key here, usually seen on flutes basically. I had one, I didn't really like it, even though I'm a flute player also. With the way the clarinet was designed, you have to ask why. Here's a set of them. <clears throat> Close up picture of the donut key with an adjusting screw on it or other key work. Nineteen twenty five wrap around octave key, no adjuster screw, flat trill key guide. This looks to be more or less in another hand spawn. We've got a speaker key here, which is pushed down with a side key. Closer up of that, Carl Fisher looks like, import. 
another image of that. Look at the uh, tightening screws there against the um, internal rod. You can see the pictures more on clarinetperfection.com. Okay, let's see what else we have here. 1926 buffet. Oh, I remember this one. See, it still has a single post over here for the side keys. Really kind of icky dirty, but cleaned up really well, if I recall. These little, if you look closely, see these little holes it looks like here, and also down here, you'll see this crack going down here to the trill key. So this clarinet was cracked, and they used an older technique of um, screw rods that go in here. You drill a hole, um, and you put in a steel rod. Nowadays, they have carbon fiber rods that have a screw thread on it and it screws the two halves together. Of course, you can do carbon banding now where you cut a slot in the entire body of the clarinet and you put carbon fiber banding in there and you epoxy it and make sure it's nice and tight first. Uh, they had metal banding in the old days, both flush fit and also just on top. Multiple ways of doing this. I like the technique where you heat it up slightly, put in some industrial super glue that's high flow, and then you cool down the body and the body shrinks and the crack goes poof and the super glue holds it real tight. There's many ways of doing it. Nineteen twenty eight Albert, they're still making Alberts back then. Look at that Albert key work. More spoon-like keys here. There's some bad uh, white balance pictures here. Albert clarinets are fun. These ones are the spatula keys that are just long and really not integrated yet. They're all independent in a way. If you ever look at the evolution of old bows, it's basically the same thing. This one has the keys on your right hand pinky, they're oboe ish in style and design. Basically, a upside down spoon. When they mention spoon key work, this is what you have. You notice the sliver key up here is also fairly large. Nineteen twenty eight, they changed the serial number system. 1930s, they're imported by Carl Fisher. We saw that beforehand also. LP stamps are for low pitch, HP for high pitch. Here we have 1930 enhanced bone. They put a C sharp, G sharp key on the lower joint with a hole going through the tenon of the upper joint. You can see the extra ring on the offset C CG key here. The manager of the event key up here. That's a long slender key work here. There's a different trill key for C sharp, G sharp on a sliver key. Nice key work there. Nineteen 
You can see the little screw right there. So there's a spring underneath there probably. Here's lower joint pictures, alternate E flat. You can see the lifter right here. Interesting key. Take a look at it again. So a lot of pictures we have there and go on to the next one, 1934. It says, notice a single post of lower joint left pinky spatula keys. Design stopped around 1936 and uses individual post stash for that. Also no adjust for the A flat throat key yet. Single post down here. No adjust on the throat keys. Still see a screw right here for a flat spring. More pictures there. <clears throat> Jumping to the website directly, the pictures are showing up here. 1934 information. Here's the E flat we're looking at. 1935, 34, 161XX. Single post lower joint picky key, no adjuster. Thirty six keywork modified left hand picky key spatula keys one shared post to two posts, which would be in this picture here. We can see right there two posts, one for each key now. Hmm. And the third one for the sliver key mentions there. There's another one with a articulated C sharp, G sharp key for the left hand pinky only. Thirty six regular bone. We still have no throat key adjust. Oh wait, there's a throat key adjuster. Look at that. And here's one from Junk Dude I got that did not have a throw key adjuster, but had the extra um, speaker key down here and third key ring. And we're going to stop there. And 1939, we're going to do another episode with the throat adjuster, and we'll go on from there. Anyways, thank you for listening today. Any questions or comments, please post it down below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. Gala of knowledge, gala of life, gala of clarinets. Buffet clarinets, right? We'll see you next time.